Good evening and thanks for joining us. It's usually politicians and their staff who occupy Parliament Hill. Not today. Thousands of protesters, most of them from First Nations, took over the hill, chanting and drumming, demanding their voices be heard. Inside, a much-anticipated meeting with the Prime Minister did go ahead, but only some First Nations chiefs were there. And late this afternoon, one of the chiefs at the heart of the protest, Teresa Spence, decided she would attend a second meeting taking place tonight with the Governor General. Her spokesperson said they expect the Prime Minister will be there as well, and if that happens, they say it will be an answer to their prayers. We have two reports tonight from Ottawa, beginning with Mike LeCouture and the protest on the Hill. Mike? Well, Donna, that certainly is a good positive development, but it remains to be seen if it will appease the people who came here looking for a more positive change to the relationship between Canada and First Nations people. Unhappy with the meeting behind closed doors, Manitoba's chiefs took the fight to Stephen Harper's doorstep, demanding he come out and meet with the people. The Idle No More movement is about unity, but the Assembly of First Nations is fraught with division. Indicative of that, at a separate entrance to the Prime Minister's office, a group of chiefs make their way in. We want to go home and tell our people we did not come here just to demonstrate. We came here with a solution and we want the, the Prime Minister to sit down with us and let's deal with these issues because they're not going to go away. Regional chiefs from the Northwest Territories, Manitoba and Ontario all boycotted the meeting with the Prime Minister. Many of them, like Isidore Day, tried to convince National Chief Sean Atlio to join them until they could set the agenda. This meeting should be open to not just First Nations all over the country, but all Canadians, and it should be uh, viewed internationally. The meeting wasn't open, but we did get a glimpse inside from the Prime Minister's office with this official photo. Now, the Governor-General wasn't in attendance, but a picture of the Queen was front and centre. And here's a look at what they talked about. Resolution of outstanding land claims, the establishment of a commission to investigate violence against Native women, and that the omnibus budget bill be put on hold because it violates their treaty rights. First Nations people believe the treaties say no matter what the government does to the land, they should be consulted first. And those treaties were signed with both Canada and the Crown. That's why they want the Queen's representative in Canada, the Governor-General, present for negotiations. It is the job of the Governor-General in this country to report back to the Queen on matters of significance. And this is a matter of significance. Following the meeting, Aboriginal Affairs Minister John Duncan characterized the discussion as frank but positive, saying they agreed that a lot more has to be done in terms of housing and also the economic prosperity of First Nations people. And perhaps the most positive outcome of all of this is that the Prime Minister has agreed to meet with National Chief Sean Atlio for a second time in the coming weeks. Donna. All right, Mike Lecatur on Parliament Hill, thank you. Now, one ever believed one meeting would or could solve grievances that have existed for generations. And when those demanding change don't agree on a path forward, the situation becomes even more complex and politically sensitive. It is tricky ground both for the Prime Minister and for First Nations leaders. And today's protesters say they aren't giving up until they get results. Jennifer Tryon is covering that angle of the story for us. Jen? Donna, this has become more than just the plight of a few. Idle No More is growing, getting stronger, and today promises to be just the beginning. Before taking on government, busloads of First Nations people arrived, rallying first around Teresa Spence, who hasn't spoken publicly in days. It was the Crown that we made the treaty with, not the Prime Minister. They're the keepers. So without both to hear her plight, so the hunger not strike continues. separate meetings. Yes, the hunger strike continues. It's been 31 days without solid food, too, for Manitoba elder Raymond Robinson, a move that helped spark today's massive march. No more! Why are you going to be oppressed? With 3,000 marching behind him, First Nations solidarity is now moving far beyond the politics of who agrees to go to what meeting. Harper! We're coming! Why do you come to you, United? He starts strong, but halfway to Parliament Hill, the march stops. Hunger, a hindrance, the elder collapsed. But he found strength in conviction and support from his people. That all-for-one unity went beyond Ottawa today. Rallies of support in many Canadian cities. In Winnipeg, 
settlers for solidarity echoed the drumming. Another idle no more blockade outside of Halifax, stopping a CN train in its tracks, and the promise of many more to come. No, because this is just the beginning. This is not the end of anything. This is not, this is just the beginning. Protesters say until the government makes good on treaty obligations to protect the environment, renew natural resources, and regain First Nations respect, I don't know more is moving forward. We're still here and we're not going to go. We're going to fight for everything that we deserve. We've lost so much over the generations of the assimilation process when the genocide and the mass and the residential schools has destroyed us just on so many levels. But we're coming back. Because this fight isn't just political, it's personal. And so the protesting will continue and there's plans for even bigger blockades in Ontario this week at major economic centres. They say until real transformative change can be reached. Donna. Jen Tryon in Ottawa for us. Thank you, Jen. And a final note on this story tonight. Someone has sent a political message by defacing a statue of Sir John A. Macdonald. The statue in Kingston, Ontario, is spray-painted with the words, This is stolen land, murderer, and colonizer. Police aren't sure if it's linked to the idle no more protests. They say it could be someone trying to smear the Aboriginal movement. City crews have since cleaned the monument, and an event to mark the late Prime Minister's 198th birthday went ahead today in Kingston, as planned.